So I like to give away prizes. So if you are a cancer survivor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Look at there, I've got five of these. So you get a little gift from me. Who raised their hand? I did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. My girl went and did a little deal for me, and then she left me in Mississippi, so all my stuff is in her trunk. <laughs> but thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Um, this is a, a great privilege. I'm super nervous. Just a little bit about me. I've lived in uh, this area since 1981. My husband and I moved here uh, to pastor in Spring Lake, and have been there ever since. It's our first church we ever pastored. We've been there since 81, so it's kind of working out. Um, <laughs> we have three sons, and they're all in ministry, and then we have nine grandchildren. And so it's been a wonderful, I love this area, I love the military influence, and we just have had a blast living here. And I kind of get very defensive of people that don't like this area. I'm like, move, if you don't like it. <laughs> but anyway, we're in love with this area, and so... I want to just tell you that um, my look, a little bit about my story. Um, so I was 48 years old, and I had been having mammograms since I was 38 because my mother's breast history, cancer history, and so I'd been diagnosed with fibrocystic breast. So that meant Pretty much every year they found something, and then they washed it, they did more x-rays, and then they washed it, and then three or four different times they removed things that were benign. But when I was 48, I go in and they find the little love and decide, if they come in, it's, it's, we need to talk to you about this, it is cancer. So that, that moment, I mean, imagine I had all these different mastectomies and it was never anything. And I just remember sitting there, and all I could hear was my heart pounding in my ears as he's telling me that it's cancer. And my husband's sitting there, and he's, we're looking at each other like, what in the world? So, and then I was more afraid of the, the treatment and the options that they were giving me. You know, they're saying, you could offer a mastectomy and not have any further treatment. You could opt for a lumpectomy and have <coughs> radiation treatment. And I was clueless. I... I'd just been living life and having fun. And I knew people that had cancer, but I didn't know how you get cancer, why you get cancer. I didn't know any of that. So I um, I decided, well, let's just go. It sounds like I'd rather have a lumpectomy and radiation. That's what I'll do. So that's what I, that was my path. And so they were able, there was nothing in the lymph nodes. I had two surgeries in two weeks and got everything cleared up with that. I had 33 treatments of radiation. And I had, they had to put my radiation off for several months because of my schedule. Because you have to be there every day for six weeks. And so I had a cruise plan, I had life, you know, going on. So I had to wait until August of that year. This was February. And um, so the whole time I'm like, oh my God, I've got this. You know, I've got to get this out of my body. But I didn't know it was out of my body. I had had a little back me. There was no cancer in my lymph nodes. But they were just making me feel like you got to do this. So the way I deal, dealt with it, I don't know if anybody else is like me, but I'm like, I need information. How did I get this? How could I never get it again? So I decided to enroll in college. And so my first day of, of, of radiation was also my first day of college. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. So... I decided to find out, to get education and learn about cancer. And so I enrolled in a, in a bachelor of science degree, 
uh, in alternative medicine because I didn't, nobody talked to me about lifestyle change, diet change, uh, anything except just medicine and you know chemicals and more medicine and more surgery. And so I thought there's, I want to know the options, all of my options. So I went, I, like I said, my first day of radiation was my first day of college. And after three, 33 radiation treatments, two surgeries, I decided that I was going to find the cannon. What can I do about it? What it actually, cancer was the worst and best thing that ever happened. Because at that point, I was 48 years old, and I was just so, I, I was just depending on doctors to make sure I was healthy and blaming everything else that was wrong in my life on somebody else. <laughs> and I realized it's I am responsible for what I do. And so I went ahead and graduated from college. During that time, I found, uh, I, I got my Bachelor of Science degree, then I went on to get a Master's in Public Health Administration. And um, during that, that time in college, I learned so many things that I, I remember just like, as I was studying, I think, I'm going to have that in my life. That's going to be a part of my life. And so I already was, I knew about essential oils, but I went and got certified in five different um, techniques that I feel like could benefit me, benefit my family. And I also learned about um, hydration. And I learned about the Japanese technology and how that they alkalize the water, it's ionized, it's, when you drink it, it's got the negative uh, response your it's a, how did every one of your electrons get it uh, and one of your cells get their own negative electrons so you're not getting free radicals and so I was like this is gonna be in my life <laughs> but I, I was in Japan and I was like I'm gonna have this one day so each one of these things that I found I it's like God ordered my steps so I, I found all the ways to get certified in essential oils I found the water, the, the Japanese water was here in the U.S. There's a machine that I have on my sink at home and I have one at my office. And so I do demos and I provide water trials and education about hydration. And I'm, I'm an independent rep for that company. So also I learned about, oh, uh, I forgot that was on there. I thought I should call this little fancy deals off. Because I needed monitored every six months. Uh, I was very afraid about the mammography. Anybody ever had a mammogram in here? It's not fun. It's it's pretty painful, and it's uh, it's radiation, which causes cancer. So I was concerned about doing that every six months, and I found out about mammography, and it was didn't replace mammography, but it was no pain, no radiation, and no compression. And it was something that I could monitor uh, my breast care and not have a mammogram every six months. And then if there is something that, that the doctors see, then I, I'll go and ask for a sonogram or a mammogram and follow up with that. So um, I found these things. And I also found a lady here in Fayetteville that was doing tomography. And when I found her, she was retiring and looking for somebody to buy her business. I had just graduated with my master's in public health administration, so that qualified me to, to run a clinic. And I was like, okay, I brought a friend in that was a doctor, medical doctor, and we interviewed her. And she said, Wanda, this is for you. This is absolutely for you. I just graduated the spring of that year. And here I was in December buying a business. So it was called a picture of health thermography. And so I turned, I Change the name a little bit. I tweak it. It's called Picture of Health Anthropography because it's anthropography because I have other things that I picture and, and been able to to uh, provide good health. And it's an LLC, so that's where I am. I now own that business, and I'm located in the Haymont area down here on Broadfoot Avenue. I'm in the Haymont Healing and Wellness Building on the second floor, Suite 201, and this is my website you all should have a card and 
I'm excited about what I'm doing there. So this is my business mantra and my mission to promote and facilitate natural paths to whole health. I honor prevention as pure and believe early detection is genius. I am so passionate about this, y'all, that I feel like every day when you wake up, if you, you understand that you're, you're dying, all of us are dying right now, right? You know that. So every day that you wake up, what are you doing to prevent an early death? What are you doing to, to extend your life? I mean, I know people that live to be 100, but they were on, in a, you know, in a nursing home for 10 years and, you know, basically no quality of life. I, I want to be have a good, long quality of life and live while I'm alive. I want to really be living. So I promote prevention. And along with the thermography, I have those other things that I talked to you about. So <clears throat> thermography is the main focus of my business. I have one other staff member. She's also a certified clinical thermographer. And in a nutshell, if you don't know about thermography, it's digital infrared thermal imaging. No pain, no radiation, no compression. I've already said that. So it's a picture of what's going on right now in your body, but also a snapshot of issues that could develop in seven to ten years down the road and cause you problems. Um, a mammogram will show everything that's happening right now, and but that's it. With, with thermography, there are markers, there are uh, things that could be happening in your body that you could change your lifestyle and not wait until you have a tumor that needs to move. So, uh, on a daily basis, when I have clients come in, um, it's so awesome to uh, just one of the first things that happened after I got the business was a lady came in, she was like in her late 60s for her annual breast uh, thermogram and I suggested I said hey would you like for me to just do a neck study um you've been having a, on her history I saw that she was having headaches so I thought you know there might be a, something going on pinched nerve or something that might show up on the thermogram and her report came back from the doctor because I'm a tech I send the pictures that I take to the to doctors and I, I think I have that on one of these slides but um he was like, she needs to see her cardiovascular surgeon immediately. She's got blockage. So we were able to take care of that. She didn't have a stroke. She didn't have a, you know, brain aneurysm. She was uh, able to take care of that and prevent it. So it's a 15 to 60 minute test of the physiology in your body. So it doesn't show a tumor, but it would show. So you know that cancer is a living organism, right? So it's going to need a blood supply. It's going to need some things to, to grow and become a tumor. So that's what we see on the thermogram. We, sh we see that pathology going on way before it's ever a lump or a tumor. So it's also useful in helping doctors identify with 70 other medical issues. Uh, it's, it's amazing that I'm like I'm not I'm just a tech so I don't diagnose or anything in, in our office but I see the same marker over and over and I see the report that the doctor sends back and it's pretty crazy how an autoimmune dysfunction will show up on their back. <laughs> it's just a, like a little marker on their back. It's a real cool spot. Or like their um, thyroid dysfunction will show up really cool in that area. So it's a heat, the, the way that your body um, regulates temperature. <coughs> this should make sense to us because moms, dads, when your kid comes in, your grandkid comes in and says, I don't feel good, what's the first thing you do? Take the temperature, right? <laughs> because that's, that's a symptom of something. So our body, the way we regulate temperature, is a good way to diagnose and see what is going on. So um, it can all really detect early things before they're actually clinically evident or even able to feel enough uh, to feel a lump in your own uh, you know, home uh, breast exam. It also indicates inflammatory <coughs> breast disease. It's actually inflammatory breast cancer. You probably know this. It, it, you got about two years, and it does not show up on the mammogram. It's not a lump. It's an inflammation of the breast tissue. So it can indicate that before the symptoms appear. <coughs> so it indicates the <coughs> cancer cells growing into tumors before they can be felt or seen, 
and as a part of the overall breast cancer screening and prevention routine, I feel like every woman should have this in their breast care um, along with their mammogram. It's not, some people ask me, this, this may come up later, well, isn't a, therm, is a thermogram better than a mammogram? That's like saying, is an EKG better than a, a heart sonogram? There's two different tests, there's two different things. So they're both very vital in making sure your, your breast are <coughs> So it's also used to monitor treatment during the healing process before a patient returns to work. If there's, you know, whatever, um, sometimes, you know, a knee, somebody with a knee surgery might just still have a lot of soreness. We can do a thermogram and see is the blood, uh, is the inflammation down? Maybe there's a, some blood that's pulling there or, you know, that, that can show up. So, the images we capture are sent to an interpretation service which employs medical doctors. They are board certified. They're, already, they're MDs, but they're also certified as thermologists by the American College of Clinical Thermology at Duke University. And physicians and chiropractors refer patients to me. And they are, you know, sometimes they're hoping to pinpoint inflammation. It might show up in blood work, and they don't really know where the inflammation is. Or there might be... Um, a person that's had some, you know, breast cancer history, and just I have clients that are they will not do a mammogram, they just won't, and so they need to do something. You know, there's there's got to be something. So um, sometimes there's unexplained pain that could be referred from, you know, like one part of the body to the other. This is all this is all working with the sympathetic nervous system. So I also get a lot of referrals from happy clients that, and a lot of my clients are annual. So they come every year just for the program. And these are just some pictures of how things show up. White is the hottest um, color on the, oops, sorry, on the thermogram or with the camera. White is hottest and black is coolest. So the different levels of, of heat <coughs> regulation in the body shows up. Um, here's some more pictures. <clears throat> See this cool spot right here? That is, the, I'm sure the doctor on their, on their chart would say, you know, it is, there is an autoimmune dysfunction marker. So, I really, I, this, just talking about thermography, I could talk for hours, <laughs> but I want, I'm getting somewhere. So, this is why I'm just kind of giving you a synopsis of what uh, thermography is. Here's some more pictures. This is kind of how, this is how it looks. This is probably someone that had some knee surgery and they're definitely, they, I think um, the report I read on this, they actually had to drain off some fluid around that knee that had built up from, you know, the blood pockets after the surgery. This poor guy's back. <laughs> That's how my back looks sometimes. So, I told you already, cancer and disease are living organisms that require a specific environment to drive. You think about that. They need certain things. They feed on acidity, oxidation, and sugar. So if an unhealthy diet, an unhealthy lifestyle will create sickness and disease, I believe a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle can create healing and wellness in your body. Does that not make sense? That I don't understand why people don't, don't agree with me on that sometimes, but it really, when in college, we learned that most of the disease orders that we're dealing with right now are products of our lifestyle and diet. There are a few genetic things that have to come up, but most of the time, it's lifestyle and diet. And more and more, when the doctors bring, send me the reports back and I'm sharing them with the patient, patient, you know what I'm seeing? All of these things you're going through are symptoms of medications you're on. You know, I'm on this medication that causes this side effect, so they give me another medication for that side effect. And then, on and on. Now, my mom is 88 years old. And she hates to take medicine. She'll always say, well, they'll say, are you taking your pain medicine for your arthritis? Well, I take a half one because I know that she, I had hepatitis when I was six. And so I've got to take care of my liver. <laughs> That's how she's always been. But what's so crazy to me is they give her a pill at night so she won't pee all night. Like, because she can sleep. But then they give her a pill in the morning to, for the diuretic. So I don't like that, but that's what she does. So I just don't understand sometimes why we 
choose to take medication. Now, we could actually make some changes. She's 88, so there's probably not a lot she could do at this point to, to work on those things. But I've had clients say, oh, no, no, they're on three insulin injections a day. But when I talk to them about changing their diet, there's no way I cannot do without my sugar. I've got to have sugar. I've got to have my dessert. So lifestyle could be a big factor in a lot of our health issues. So this is why I registered to come here to talk to you. I want some suggestions <coughs> for me as a business owner because I want to take my practice to another level. Um, I see we see clients in the office every day, or, you know, not every single day. We're appointment only, so um, we set our own appointments and around our other schedules because I have a lot of hats that I wear besides just being a thermographer. So. I really want to increase the education side of my business. So in my clinic, I offer the thermography, the essential oil therapies, the, the water um, demos, trials, and sales. I offer um, the machine that I have is quite pricey, and it's, you know, it's, it was a choice I made for my health, but everybody doesn't see the value in that. They're like, well, I drink plenty of water. My tap water's good. <laughs> But, you know, I, I could show them some tests and some things about their tap water or their bottle water that they're using, and it kind of, it kind of enlightens them. So um, I offer the water to my clients free for a month. Just They come every other day, get, it, get their water, and that way they can see how it makes them feel, what the difference it makes. So I'm, I'm very passionate about all three of these areas. And so a lot of times people say, I just think you just need to do one thing, you know, just... Do one thing, Wanda. Well, my one thing is offering resources to prevent disease and cancer. So I feel like everything I'm doing kind of falls, and I, I, I'm saying this to y'all, you can give me your opinions later, but I feel like everything I'm doing falls under that umbrella. So this is my camera. <coughs> this is that this is my the office where I actually do the scans, my computer, and this is my the bed that I do the, um, when I have essential oil treatments, I move the bed out to the middle of the room and use that. And this is my water machine. So I already promote healthy diet, healthy lifestyle, and oxygen hydration to my clients. But I want to offer more classes in the building and online. And I use uh, acuity scheduling many of you are familiar with that here. <coughs> I use an uh, online scheduler, so I put my availabilities, my uh, other girl puts her availabilities online, and people can just, you know, at midnight they're thinking about, they can book an appointment online. I also, you know, in there I have where they can get a free 30 minute phone consult with me, or they can set up to get a water demo, all that's on there already. But um, I really am feeling more about you know, I would love to get out and teach more in the health and wellness field. And I, my, I know there are a lot of men in here, but women struggle with so many things, and that's my passion is to help women with cancer, menopause, hormonal imbalances, all using holistic and alternative medicine. I'm not against um, Western medicine, but I just feel, you know, a lot of people look at me crazy when I'm like, why don't you try this oil instead of antibiotic right now? And they're like, oh, that's, that's the, that new thing is, no, this is actually in the Bible. <laughs> they use this in the Bible. It's all ancient medicine. So our medicine that we use, which we call um, allopathic medicine, is only about 200 years old. So, you know, even the Chinese medicine and the Ayurvedic medicine, they could look at your tongue and say, you have a liver problem. You know, <laughs> there was so many things they did before we had all these uh, medical testing and whatnot. So I feel very strongly about teaching women to take charge of their health. Um, two things. I First of all, I feel like a lot of us are in the, the blame mode and excuse mode. And I've been there. I'm, I'm still I'm not on this journey myself. Uh, just a couple years ago, I'm like, you know what? I'm just stopping anything white that's not going to my mouth because I'm in charge 
and I kept got to put blame in everything. Like my, you know, my busy life. I travel a lot, so I'm at the mercy a lot of times of whoever my host is as to where we eat. So it was like, okay, I can't always pick the restaurant. I can't always pick the meal, but I can pick what I pick up and put in my mouth. <coughs> Play off of that menu. So I'm on that journey, but and I understand. I try to. I want to educate uh, and help women and understand that you're in charge of you. You're in charge of your health. You're in charge of your emotions. You're in charge of your uh, happy. <laughs> you know, you're in charge of you. So don't wait. Don't be waiting on somebody to come along and take the reins and help you get on the right path because it ain't happening. Nobody can take care of me but me. My husband loves me. We've been married almost 45 years. But the guy can't take care of me. I can't take care of him. I mean, he continually does things in his health that I'm like, I just have to turn my head because, you know, he just decides he'd rather really have a Mountain Dew than a glass of water. <laughs> so, also, I want women to take charge of their health because during this whole cancer deal that I went through, I was literally bullied by physicians. I was treated with this thing like I was a second grader. And I was even dismissed by my oncologist because I wouldn't, I didn't want any of his prescriptions. I might test me every year to see if I'm okay. But stop it with the, you know, the force and trying to force me to take pill. So I won't get breast cancer again. Oh, but you might get cervical cancer. I, we just got to mention that in our 30 minute uh, briefing about this medication. And then when I turn it down, then they come back and say, well, this one's safer. Well, then why didn't you tell me about this one first if it's safer? I, so I, I really feel like I was bullied because of my choices for my body. And I know that every woman that steps into that whole world of cancer and disease is facing the same thing. And I just want to come alongside them and say, hey, you can, you can change doctors. You don't have to keep going to the same doctor. <coughs> you can find a naturopath. You can find, I was treated on the phone by a naturopath doctor during my, when I found one during my cancer ordeal. And he, you know, he would confirm things because they, they didn't want me taking any kind of, um, anything that was good for me, like no supplements, um, you know, no vitamins and minerals the whole time. And, you know, go in there in the lounge while you're waiting for your treatment, and there's Krispy Kreme and orange juice. They weren't, they were just concerned about making sure I did the medical protocol and not look, didn't look at my lifestyle, my health, my diet, none of that. I think a, the actual medical doctor gets about one semester of nutrition. So I really feel passionate about making sure women have someone to partner with them and you know help them through these these challenges. So I offer physical health and mental health education. My goal is to educate, equip, empower them. I don't I don't want anybody to take away a person's ability to choose a course of treatment that they're comfortable with or the option to refuse a the treatment they're not comfortable with. Y'all, I can't tell you what what I've been through with this. I honestly hate to go to the doctor now <clears throat> if I have to go get a mammogram or a physical checkup because they push the meds on me. And I I mean, I go with my mother and her physician and I have almost, you know, I, I just want to shake him because he, he wants to push medications that she's not comfortable with. And he's like, you know, he doesn't say it, but it's like, you're an 88-year-old dumb boat. You don't know what you're talking about. But she does. She researches. When she gets a, a prescription, she's going to go online, and she is going to look at that medication. And I've told her, you know, don't use any kind of antibiotic with this uh, suffix. You don't want this one. <coughs> try it. Don't take that one. So she knows. And that's the one they wanted to take every time. And so, anyway, back to that. <laughs> I get on my tangent. But I don't feel like anybody should have to go through that and be bullied into doing something they're not comfortable with. It's my body. It's your, you, you're in control of your body. <clears throat> so here's one of my questions. I've got four questions for you. <coughs> so I try to use my vision statement as my parameter, which is you know offering holistic options for health and wellness. 
But do you do you see any way that I could better incorporate all that for a picture of health and thermography? Would you like me to go through all my questions and then? Sure. Okay. So that's my first question. My second question is. Do any of you have any advice about starting an online video class or membership, like a subscription membership type thing, for, uh, how many of you know what I'm talking about just right now already? Any, any suggestions for that or any experience you can share with me? I've taken some courses and um, paid a lot of money to learn a lot of things about that, but I just I want to ask y'all here in Fayetteville. <laughs> I advertise heavily on social media, and that's free, and then... <clears throat> I advertise in Women's Be Magazine. I, I have a native uh, ad that comes out every month. And this one is, um, this one has, it's, I get a full page and it, I talk about thermography. And this one I talk about water and some, I talk about mental health and some. Um, Women's View is a great magazine, but it costs me over $100 a month. And um, sometimes it's kind of tough doing that, but. That's, this is my only paid advertising I'm doing right now, except sometimes I might do a Facebook boost post, you know, for $20 or whatever. So if you have, and I network as often as I can with my schedule. Um, my other tech does not do any networking at all, so she's been told to advocate while I'm doing it. But uh, any other suggestions for free, free advertisement, get my name out there. I also want to mention, I have these packets that I made up for physician's office. I've dropped these off at many physician's offices. And I do have some doctors and chiropractors that refer patients to me. But it's just, I made up this little, um, this, kind of letting them know, see this, kind of let them know what I offer. And uh, the, the business is very mobile. I mean, I have uh, taken my camera and my computer to a networking event even and did hand phone just so they could see, you know, what it looks like. But uh, on that same note, I could travel to different <coughs> doctor's offices that might have, you know, separate patients lined up for me for an afternoon and do them in their office if that was. And I do have a doctor that is um, negotiating right now with me about being in her office a couple days a week with my equipment. The only thing is, when I'm there, then my tech can't do things in our office. So that's, you know, the cameras are like... Forty thousand dollars. So I don't. That's not really unless I got a business loan. That's not really an option right now for me. So, any other suggestions about how to get the word out and advertise <coughs> my services? And the last question: any suggestions on how to get more referrals from doctors, chiropractors, and like I said, I do already have a packet um, made up that I deliver. But um, that's that's kind of why I'm here today. Yes. Well, I would say on the last one, work it backwards. Find out about your successful patients and then find out what doctors and chiropractors they go to and get them to, to feed it back. Yeah, and I have, I have that is a great suggestion, and I have right now an appointment Friday with that situation where I just hear her name over and over, you know, and so she hasn't referred people to me, but so I have an appointment with her on Friday to just kind of say, hey, you know, thank you, and for what you're doing, and here's what I offer. So that is great. On a um, weird little note, I would um, probably talk to a bunch of therapists for people with anxiety due to cancer. Um, my mom had four separate primary cancers. Um, I'm a cancer survivor myself. So I think um, giving them an avenue about pre scanning and prevention, um, cancer support groups, um, things like that, just so they even their family members they could share and people who never had cancer would go. My mom was diagnosed with 48 also and so I remember being like 23 had my first cancer. Right. So I think it's very important to um, have an option. But what is your cost point and would insurance cover it? Is this elective? Okay. So the insurance is not covered at this point. Um, the the breast the, the breast thermogram alone is one eight and then in 90 to 120 days, they come back in for their their follow up, which creates the baseline for life, and it's 150. I always, almost always, have a coupon out there um, in in my advertising for 10 percent off. So they have a code, and they go in the book, they can put that code in. So you're looking at 162 for their first and then initial, and you know, a little less than that for their second. Um, 
the full body is 480, no discount, you know, that's how much, that's the highest point I have in my office. And then, so the, the 480 is the highest, and of course, like I said, you know, they can use the discount with that. Uh, the only thing I don't really do discounts on in my office are the essential oil um, therapies because it costs a lot to do that, and it's just me doing it. I, my tech doesn't do any of that. So it's, um, I only charge $85 for an hour treatment. So sometimes I'll actually, if I'm promoting, I'll throw in an extra 30 minutes uh, head massage or something, or you know, to go along with their, with their treatment. It's called raindrop technique, which is the most uh, prevalent thing that I do. Um, and it's just introducing oils to their spine and their feet, and it's good for their autoimmune and all that, but it's also great for uh, just getting over a bunch of sickness or preventative. It's great for preventative medicine because it keeps your food strong. Do you know why insurance companies or Medicare don't cover it? Yeah, it's called Big Farm. <laughs> Thermography is as old as mammography, but Big Pharmacy has taken over control of what insurance companies do with their money. There are some cancer insurances, like AFLAC, for example. If you have a cancer policy with it, they will give you 50% of it. Like if I, I, <coughs> I get a receipt, I always get a receipt, but they'll take that receipt and act like we'll send them half back because it's a cancer preventative. And um, so that's, I don't understand why exactly. Um, we do have a code that we can use, but they just deny it. Are there any efforts, you know, by legislators or anybody else to change it? There, there is, there, and you know, there's, that's that's kind of like not my, I, politics kind of make my stuff tighten up. So I'm not in that realm, but there are people out there doing that, advocating for the demography. And um, there's uh, there's a couple of doctors that are really uh, into that arena and promoting it that, that I know. I know there's probably more, but um, also uh, there are some breast cancer uh, nonprofits that uh, I, I'm just I'm really learning more about this because. I didn't know there were grants for like so an individual. I think it opens up in April. There's a and they told me I could put it on my website. It's a breast cancer support group, and in April they have they, they raise money all year, but in April they release the fund for individual grants so that person could they couldn't afford a mam uh, thermogram, they could get four mammogram, they could get thermogram and mammogram, they could get uh, you know a grant. <coughs> um, you know a thermogram. The most the expensive thermogram is 480. The breast thermogram is 480. Mammogram is like 2,800. So I don't understand why they would not push. Uh, is there a thermographer association where you might be able to talk with people throughout the United States that might have found a loophole? Yes, and I am. I'm in. I actually go to an annual thing. For that group, and um, there's two, there's kind of different views on that. Uh, one is, do we really want to get the government regulating thermography? Because when the government steps in and regulates it, people like me to the four It would be in an office where it would cost thousands of dollars, and if you didn't have insurance, you couldn't afford. You understand what I'm saying? So there's different schools of thought on that whole thing. So what about that um, care credit? Um, can you accept care credit? Yes. Maybe yes. advertise, um, we accept care credit for mm -hmm. people who couldn't afford it. This care credit is basically a debit card. You know, Correct. So, yes, yeah. we do that. Um, there's a meetup app, and I've seen a lot of them that do like yoga, meditation, all kinds of other right. little things, and they charge for like group activities of five to twenty dollars. Okay. You might be able to do a meetup and maybe do the essential oils um, at a cheaper rate in a group setting, and just introduce them, and that maybe word of mouth and having several of those to bring in more business. Can I repeat that? Yeah. Uh, so she was. I was already looking that up. There's plenty of places I'll meet people who are like vegans. There's already a. a a group out there that's trying to get what you need, right? Like, so what do you want to do? For example, Apple Crate. These are people who are yes. 
conscientious about their health. And we're going there for specifically exactly. There's like three apothecaries in this area. There's one downtown Fayetteville. There's one right in downtown Hope Mills. I know it's a little small, but those are the kind of people that are already looking for. Yeah, and I try. I, I mean, I try to find these people. I put my brochures there, and I, I, I have had people uh, go into Apple Crate, start talking to the, you know, chatting up the lady, and she's like, "Hey, well, you should try this." And they, you know, they refer me. So those are all stuff that, that I'm working on, and I thank you. So, uh, speaking from I'm a digital marketer, so I can help a little bit with the online course creation thing. Okay. So pretty much just. Anything you can need to do online is a free way to do it. Have you heard of something called Screencast? No. Okay, so Screencast, it's a free digital program you can do that will record your computer screen. And you can even have a webcam with it too. So that that's where you can shoot basic educational videos for free as long as it doesn't go over 15 minutes. It's then they try to get you their paid plan, but it's not too expensive. And you can upload it directly to YouTube and then make that video private. So that way YouTube's going to be covering your hosting Cost as well, okay. you can just embed that video straight onto your website. Okay. So going that method would allow you to create those educational videos, put them on your website for a very low cost. Mm -hmm. As well as you can, with most websites, you usually have an option to have that type of membership area. So if you're trying to do a subscription type service, you can put those videos behind that wall. And have you also considered creating? I know it's weird to say this, most but people take kind of stand off this idea, but create a blog on your website. Um, I have a blog, but it's not on my website because, like I said, I'm a pastor's wife, so I've had yeah. a blog for years. I'm a writer. I have often said Christian books, but, and I'm a public speaker in the motivational field of, of the church world. Yeah. So, like, getting that all <laughs> transferred over to this business, I really, and I, I do a lot of health seminars and whatnot at religious functions because it's becoming more and more whole health. You know, we, we need to deal with the whole person. So I'm doing that too, but um, <coughs> this whole online thing, I mean, I have spent a lot of money just trying to learn it all, and then I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so many things, do I need Kajabi? Because that's like yeah. hundreds of dollars a month. It's, it's scary. Have you done the Facebook Live? I know you mentioned that you have Facebook. You I use I've that as an outlet for education. That's one of the things that I I love doing. I don't, it's like, I put it off because I'm so vain. I'm like, okay, I don't look good enough for Facebook Live today, or I, you know, in the middle of driving when I'm thinking about I don't want to drive and do it because these people are like, you shouldn't be driving when you're doing that. So Facebook Live is something I'm trying to work in my life as a regular. I do them, but, and I get a lot, I mean, I get a lot of hits on stuff that I do um, on my page. Hey, so I would suggest, and this sounds really silly, but just creating a calendar, like create a calendar for the month of March mm -hmm. for your Facebook, have an idea of on, you know, March 2nd, I want to post something about my water. On March 5th, I want to post something about, you know, the thermography, you know, and having that schedule, yeah. it holds you, you a little bit more accountable whenever you go to do it, and you're like, oh, I have to do this video today on this. Seems to help a little bit. And I actually hired a VA, and uh, she's helping me along those lines, <laughs> because, like I said, I have, I like, am in charge of five different business Facebook social media stuff, because that's, my husband's over all these departments, <laughs> and he is you know, he doesn't do the, the online stuff. So he's like, I need you to do this Facebook page for this group. I need you to do a Facebook page for this group. So, and I even, you know, I've, I've helped um, in ministry like different churches. And so I, I'm that person that I volunteer and say yes. And then and then I'm overwhelmed. So it's like my stuff, it's, I've, I've hired a VA to help me with, with that because that's, and, and that's one thing I need to talk to her about is like doing that in the calendar. That's a great idea. Thank you. Oh. What about VA and movie boards? Just trying to just approach them. For years, uh, chiropractors were laughed away by the VA. They broke in the door, now they're actually doing it for active duty. So start off by offering free of this or just go talk to them. But, uh, wounded warriors, a ton of young uh, young women now because they use the same equipment that the bigger guys do. And one, just walking across town with that stuff beat you up. And then when they go out and jump and everything yeah. else, so there's a lot of them out there. Yeah, I actually have uh, quite a few veterans. Uh, one of my patients, she she jumped out of a plane at 19 in her, when she was 19 years old, and she was healthy. So she's been a disabled vet since the age of 19. Her body is, I almost got to want to cry when I see her remember it. But she's dealing with so many different issues. But, and I, I don't, you know, I haven't really followed this, you know, pinpointing and focusing on that, that group. But that's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Give GIs both. 
If we like you, we'll tell ten people if we hate you. We'll <laughs> and if, it, if, they can, if they can save one person out of pain, they're going to tell everybody they access. They'll stop them in the commissary and do whatever. So that's awesome. keeping that door. Great. Yeah, okay. A lot of things. But when you're saying VA, like, you know, and of course I do what you're talking about, but it made me think about even veterinarian also. Like, yeah. does your thing work for, for animals as well? So um, that might be a... You know, there there is a... Now, the essential oil, there's like a whole side of that for pets. Like a whole side of that. The, I'm not sure about the animal. I think thermography does because I know that, um, you know, in, in my training, because I've never tried to do a thermogram on a dog, but I have had some pretty hairy chested guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it shows, it, it, the, it shows through the, the hair. I think so. they actually do really like something like that. Because um, I thought about it as like, as far as career fairs, like at schools, right. and then also health fairs, and then I, I know too, like there's academies, health academies within the school system that they, you know, do internships at the VA, they do internships at, you know, at Cape Fear Valley, so they're really kind of exposed to a lot of things. Um, also too, I was thinking about maybe examples or sample water and stuff that you have for events like this that you could share, um, even like being a part of advisory boards um, that they might have even for like health academies. Um, free even thermal imaging, like maybe have so many, you know, a, a week or do a drawing or something or something like that. Definitely the whole system the school system because I think they might be like the third largest, you know, employer here in Cumberland County. But we talk a lot about self-care, so just really just kind of going those places. Also maybe high places where employers that, you know, cancer is, is really, um, you know, prevalent. Um, and I did this when they were talking about the care credit, and I was talking about even layaway pro programs where people can pay into, if they know that their you know, exam's gonna be $500, maybe can I give you, go ahead and start, you know, can I give you 200 this month and 250, and then so when it's once it's all paid, then they can get that service. Um, you know, of course the video demo I thought about, you know, he's talking about that. I thought about crowdfunding and like, you know, how you're talking about the grants, um, and then just for your new machine, you know, a lot of times I think as business, you know, small business owners, like we have to kind of be maybe more creative on trying to get together to see how we can help the next person. I mean, I like the way that this is my first time here. Uh -huh. And then, so I like the way that the cards and stuff are out that you can kind of, and really we could be that support group for each other to kind of be able to, you know, get examples and stuff of yours and be able to be that word of mouth for you. Um, and um, attending their meetings, I don't know what I meant by that. <laughs> Services and their donations to schools, so maybe that you can actually set up something or attend staff meetings or something like that. We have like power sessions where we do things and it might just kind of be um, targeted on self-care. Um, but at places like that, if you even say, hey, I'll set up a table and I'll, I'm going to charge this much for each image, but then I'll be able to give a percentage back to the school. Because a lot of times we'll bring in people just for that so they can kind of give back. So that's just a couple of things. So, do you have yeah. any thoughts? Thought, you should give me those notes. <laughs> I definitely will. Um, actually, right about, uh, right. I'm scheduled next week to be at 7 a.m. at UPS for their employee health fair. So I, I do as much as I can with my other schedule. I try to keep it out there. And I um, that's one of my weak areas, I think. I, I'm sure I really need to, to hire a PR person to help me. But the thing of it is I, I take people with me to these deals. And sometimes I'm a little, they're like, just come here, you're, you know more. So it's hard to get what I know to, to help somebody else. I would think also, um, like she said, the discounted thing, like if you did, um, not buy one, get one free, but kind of like refer one, get a hundred dollars off a uh, full body scan, then you're getting the referral and you're getting the person who comes back. Right. Yeah. I do the 10 for 10. Um, if, if, they're, if they, they get a $10 gift card if they're in their free gift for 10% discount. If they refer somebody, and also I do, I am. Uh, I was on the advisory board with Bentley Ladies Power Lunch for a couple of years. I'm not right now, but I do still attend those, and I am a sponsor, so I do give away a free uh, thermogram every quarter at that meeting. That's part of my deal. So, uh, am I reaching the end with my growth here? <laughs> I don't. I forgot what time we're over. Yeah, one more question. <laughs> um, <laughs> besides. Um, Groupon, I would go on there because oh, yeah. I bought things on there like crazy. Um, but how expensive is your water testing machine, and does it get rid of Gen X? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. We all look at each other. We yeah. hit tap water. We're like, oh no. Because <laughs> if you don't know, I would see if it does. Because that, for people who are scared to death in Fayetteville, would probably buy a very expensive machine to know the family say. So, Just so you know, right now I paid twenty six dollars for Valley Spring water from a Wichita. Arkansas, yeah. twenty six dollars a five gallon jug. Yeah. Just ridiculous. to make sure it's like far off the beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Primo okay. water at Lowe's, if you buy refillable, I can do there, like almost five gallons. They're only like six. Oh yeah, I know they have like different kinds of. This is like natural spring water. It's like the cleanest stuff you can. So well, Primo's on reverse osmosis. So I. Uh, Sorry for that. The, my machine <laughs> is the, the the one I have. There's like eight different machines. The one I have is the medical grade, the Japanese medical technology. And it starts around four grand. So, but it lasts you 15, 25 years, you know, and it's very low maintenance. This doesn't cost you more than, uh, if you change your filter like every, you know, twice a year, <coughs> it's still a hundred bucks a pop. So, uh, there's a, it's very low maintenance. Um, so, I, I don't charge to do a demo. I just, I do those free. And it, it's very eye opening because even bottled water, like, you know, I'll, if I was, if I had all the time today and I had brought all that stuff that I could, and I could even come back and just do the water deal. But if I just tested all the bottled water, it is, it's dead. It's actually draw, you know, and even like the um, is one of the worst water. This will just literally pull the minerals right out of your body. So anyway, I do all that testing free and provide them with the water to try and actually was thinking as I drove out of my driveway this morning, I just brought a big old thing of water. <laughs> but um, I'm available if you want to hook up with me and I could do a demo for you. I, I got people's house and do a demo. I, they can come to my office and do a demo. I've gone to churches that have done, you know, 20 people. So those demos are there. And really water is it's big right now. It's huge. And the cool thing about that kind of helps me fund a lot of things because I get a rebate from the company every time I refer someone that buys, and it's, it's a nice rebate. So and that that's just kind of like, a lot of people don't like that, but I'm like, you know what, when you go and buy that bottle of water, somebody is getting money that, there's no regulation on bottled water. Does, does your water, does it remove in it? So, so my filter that I have in the machine, um, I'm not sure. I'd have to do the research on that. I know it, it takes a lot of things out, but we also have pre, you can do a pre filter under your sink that would do whatever your specific the fluoride that you're worried about or whatever. So I'm not sure about the Gen X, but I would, I could definitely find out within a matter of hours. But um, there are pre filters that, and they're, you know, $100, $80 to go under your sink that you could use for specific things like that. I don't know if there is a filter that, uh, is there, do y'all know a filter that takes out Gen X? Or uh, as, as far as we know right now, there is no federal guideline to remove Gen X, so no. Britta says that they, that they do, but it's not official. There's the, we've, um, we've, done, we've done our homework on that. Okay. Yeah. So I'll take, okay. I'll take the last question. What in this community do for you? Okay, so I, I think, you know, the, the word of mouth, like you said, you know, word of mouth is the greatest advertisement, and I agree. If they, if they, if they like you, they're going to tell 10 people. What was it? How would you say that? If, you, if I like you, I'll tell 10 people. If I, if I dislike you, I'll tell everybody. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that that is so true. But um, word of mouth is the most powerful form of advertisement. And I think that's one reason social media is so hot, because, like, like your friend is posting it, so that's like a referral, right? So uh, if you would like my Facebook page, uh, my Instagram page, I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on, what's the other one? Uh, Align, what is it called? But I, and then I'm, you know, Facebook is Picture of Health and Thermography uh, on Facebook and Twitter and all that. I'm more on Facebook. I'm, I'm not, I try to think about Instagram, but I'm trying to learn it. So if you want to share my, you know, like my page, follow my page, whatever, and, um, and then if you see that I'm doing a what a meeting, a some kind of briefing or demo, um, share that. Um, also, if you want to put a good word in me with Women's View Magazine, I don't know. <laughs> I really just uh, need. I wanted to come and get some, pick your brains about the the different ways of just. Do you all feel that 
I'm staying under the right umbrella with my mission. Oh, so absolutely. My, all my things are. But I'm a testimonial kind of person, so Yelp reviews, all kinds of things. So I would really make sure that you have testimonials on yeah. all different avenues. I try to get, um, I'm, I've not been great at, well, my, my tech has been doing a lot of it. She's on maternity leave right now, so I've been doing more in the office. But um, I try to get clients to, you know, just do a Facebook Live real quick. And so I've got a few of those, but I need to do better at that. Because really, um, I just had a lady last week come in, and she has this fear of cancer, like all of her friends are dying from cancer. So she is petrified, and so she's not even, it wasn't even time for her next program, but she wanted to come in because she felt something. She, and she's got five or six breasts as well. So I was able to take her pictures, and then she could look at them. And I showed her, you know, her last scan and this scan, and they were almost identical. So she, she even before the doctor saw it, she left my office and like, oh, I feel like 100 pounds off my shoulder. Just that peace of mind saying there's no pathology going on that we see here. Now the doctors could have some other opinion, but what what we see is, you know, this looks like it did last time and you were fine. So anyway, that's that's kind of a cool thing on a daily is just seeing people, you know, having that peace of mind and, and knowing that they have options. Thank y'all so much. You've been a great audience.